Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos, Marisol Gonzalez, and Travis Walton. Tales of Haunting, Murder, and Scary Mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on the strange case of a young girl in Arizona and one of the most infamous alien abduction cases ever reported. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos. Number one, Marisol Gonzalez. For over two decades, the death of 17-year-old Marisol Gonzalez in Cottonwood, Arizona, sat quiet in the police case files. Not only was she a teenager when she was killed, but she was carrying her first child and about to give birth. Her body, along with her child, was found in an alley just a block away from her house. She had been shot in the face with what police believed to be a small caliber pistol on March 25, 1997. Marisol was pregnant with her son, whom she had already named Andrew. Her body was found at 6 a.m. She was wearing sweatpants, a shirt, and slippers. Those around the area heard gunshots fired at around midnight the night before. After her death, police were baffled and appalled at the brutality of what had occurred. The initial investigation centered on the father of the child and Marisol's then-boyfriend, 17-year-old Cecilio Cruz. Cruz was a player. Not only was Marisol pregnant, but he also had another girlfriend who was also pregnant at the exact same time. The two women even ran into each other at the OBGYN. Over 90 leads were investigated in the case, and even though the primary suspect, Cruz, was high on their list, it seems most people were afraid to say anything because of his notoriety. It's believed he was a gang member and involved in drugs, but there were also rumors Marisol was killed by a rival gang as payback towards Cruz. Despite the extensive investigation during the time, there was virtually no physical evidence found on the scene. On the night of March 25th, Marisol's sister was on the phone at their house when Marisol told her that she was expecting a call. An incoming call from Cruz then came in, but Marisol's sister ignored it because she was talking to someone long distance. After her sister was done with her call, Marisol took the phone and spoke with a friend. Then another call came through, this time from Cruz, and Marisol told her friend they'd talk later. This was the only time it was confirmed Cruz spoke with Marisol before she died since he had denied doing so. Soon after the call, Marisol put on slippers, headed out, and was never seen alive again. Fast forward 17 years and Sergeant Todd Moore takes a look back on the case. After all, this was the only cold case in the department. Although the officers felt Cruz still had something to do with her death, they couldn't find enough evidence to charge him. Then TNT's Cold Justice television show reached out to see if they could feature the case and help come up with fresh ideas and possible angles. Sergeant Moore and the investigative team went through the case trying to see if they missed anything. They went out and followed the leads and again conducted interviews. This time, they managed to put together enough circumstantial evidence pointing to Cruz's involvement in the murder. Even some people who were afraid of speaking out against him before now weighed in and helped the investigation. Eventually this paid off and Cruz was arrested. When he was being cuffed, he asked for a lawyer and police were glad they finally managed to close this chapter. Chief Jody Fanning was among the original investigators of the case in 1997. The chief said they never forgot about Marisol's case and have continued to support anything and anyone that might help to close it. Number two, Travis Walton. On November 5th, 1975, seven men working in the Apache Stig Greaves National Forest, an area that runs along eastern central Arizona and into New Mexico, were greeted with an unusual sight. After a tough work day, the seven men headed home, and as they were driving in the evening, they saw a large disc-shaped object hovering ahead of their truck. 22-year-old Travis Walton was more than curious. He jumped out of the back of the pickup, despite repeated warnings by the other workers. Then he got close to the UFO. As soon as he approached it, he was hit by a sudden jolt of energy, which hurled him more than 20 feet into the air. It knocked him unconscious and scared off his friends. They then sped off in fear, leaving Walton behind. Shortly after, the guys argued and decided to head back for him. They looked for him everywhere, 
staying for at least half an hour, but they couldn't find him. Later that night, one of the guys, Ken Peterson, called the police to report Walt missing. It was Sheriff Deputy Chuck Ellison who later met up with the other members of the group, and he said two of the men were crying as they recalled the events. Ellison said their story sounded unbelievable, but as I looked at them, I began to believe they were telling the truth. The deputy informed the sheriff and he asked not to let the men leave until he got there. Once he was there, the woodcutters told them what happened. Eventually, several members of the logging crew, along with some officers, returned to the site to try to look for Walton. Since Walton couldn't be found or any traces of the supposed flying disc, the police began thinking the guys may have done something bad to him and made up the story to cover their tracks. Police were worried since Walton only had on jeans, a shirt, and a thin jacket, so it's possible if he was out there and alive, he would suffer from hypothermia. When they informed Walton's mother about his disappearance, the police found her reaction restrained and again, that raised their suspicion something might be amiss. For several days, authorities tried looking for Walton, but they couldn't find any signs of him. More suspicion then surrounded the other loggers as Walton's disappearance continued. The boys even had to take lie detector tests, save for one of them who refused. All of them passed, saying they didn't hurt Walton. After the investigation, officers concluded they were telling the truth. Then, five days after disappearing, Travis Walton suddenly reappeared on November 10th. After getting hit by the beam, Travis's next conscious thought was waking up in an unusual hospital room on top of a gurney. He said he was being observed by three short and bald creatures, he had blurry vision, and he felt heavy in his chest. Walton said he fought against three creatures until there was a human with a helmet that came inside the room. He then blacked out and three other humans came in and placed a mask over his face. After that, Walton said he couldn't remember anything until he found himself walking by the highway with the unusual flying disc hovering above him. Walton eventually called his sister, asking her to pick him up at a gas station. They initially thought this was a prank, but they drove out and once they got there, they found him. He was wearing the same clothes from when he first disappeared. He looked thinner and had grown a considerable amount of facial hair despite only being gone for five days. In the car, Walton looked scared and was trembling. He constantly muttered about seeing creatures with terrible eyes. Walton thought he was gone for only hours, but he was shocked to find out he was gone for almost a week. His family didn't decide to inform the public right away when he showed up since he looked so weak. After the public learned Walton had returned, he was rushed to the hospital for a medical exam. The exam found that Walton had a small red dot on his elbow. It was similar to a mark made by a hypodermic needle. When his urine was analyzed, it didn't have ketone, even though he looked as if he had not eaten for days. Walton's case caused plenty of questions and ignited a frenzy for UFO enthusiasts. Was Walton telling the truth or was it all an elaborate hoax? Eventually, he went on to write a book called The Walton Experience that detailed his claims and became the basis for a film titled Fire in the Sky. He has since appeared at UFO conventions as well as on television recounting his story, which has never changed. For many of those involved in the encounter, life moved forward. Some had to move several times because the press and people kept hounding them. Walton believes he was abducted by aliens and stands by his story even to this day. So they were two of the most mysterious and out of this world stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted 2 is sure to show you why. Please remember to subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed watching this video. We have new ones coming out every Wednesday and Saturday for you to check out. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon.